In this video, we're going to explore making replacement clay faces for stop motion puppets. Okay, here's a typical clay character uh, which uses re a replacement mouth system, which is not really perceptible to the camera. Um, you can't tell that this mouth pops off, and because of that, the end effect when you replace the mouth, it looks like a very realistic motion. Uh, of the jaw and also the stretching of the sides of the mouth and the lips and uh, that's pretty much the the benefit to using a replacement mouth system is that characters can uh, be very expressive and there's really no boundaries as to where the mouth can go. Okay, So the first step is to sculpt the character that you want based on your own personal designs uh, this design is one that I created uh, a few years back and this is Captain Quill and what I've done here is I've cast the top piece in plastic but this is actually all one color of clay uh, this sort of beige color, flesh color and what I did was I had to determine where do you cut the mouth off or replace him and um, what you need to do when you sculpt the character is you need to study the design and figure out how the mouth should move. Now, in the old days, they would normally take clay like this, uh, you know, a regular character, and this had to be made completely from clay, and then they would re-sculpt the mouth for every frame of film. So, really, that's kind of the hardest way to do things, and it's very time-consuming, and uh, you're more prone to make mistakes during animation. So. The trick and one of the, the benefits to doing this system is that all you have to do is pop the mouth off and when you stick it on, all you have to do is blend in the seam line where the two parts of clay meet. Now as I said before, this is made from plastic and this is made from clay. So, uh, But what, what I want to show here is how I determine where to cut the mouth off. And you can see that I decided to cut it along the side of the jaw, right under the nose, and it's the same on both sides. Now the reason for that is because the jaw has to hinge open, and I figured that when the mouth is closed, it will hinge right at this point here. So when the mouth closes, the jaw will close like this. So in order for me to keep the top piece from having to be re-sculpted during animation, I had to cut the mouth off at this point here so that any bending of the jaw can be replaced. So that's a really important thing to keep in mind, that whatever you want to move during your replacements, you have to make sure that you cut above that area. So all this area here will move while the top is always going to be the same. Um, so you can see that when I cut the mouth off I had two pieces like this a mouth and an upper head and the next step is to make a casting of these and to cast these what I used is a silicone that I brought from Berman Industries um, and the mouth here you can see underneath has a flat area and so what I did is I took the flat area which won't really be seen by the camera and I laid it flat like this built a box up around the mouth and then poured the silicone in so that's kind of just a, a basic idea of what I did uh, for the mouth and for the head I knew that the back of the head uh, would be covered in hair later on with different colors of clay so I just cut the, the back of the head flat, laid the head down like this, built the box up around it, and poured silicone in to make a mold of this. So the areas that you're not going to see, like the back of the head, is where you want to pour your uh, clay into a mold. So those are just some small tips. Um, and now we're going to get into more detail of how to make the molds themselves for the replacement mouths. Okay, so the next question is, what do we need in order to make our mold? Uh, now we're going to be making a silicone mold, and we have the two parts. We have 
the headpiece and we have the mouth which we've cut off of the head and you'll notice also that when you sculpt your mouth you want it to be neutral like this there's no this mouth's not open there's no expression nothing like that it's neutral and that's what your starting point is and so we have the two parts the head and the mouth now for the head you might want to uh, um, just clean it up as good as you can when it's you know made from clay and everything and with the mouth also make sure it's nice and clean make sure that it fits on the face exact and that there's nothing um, out of alignment when you cut it off you want to use something sharp like an exacto knife or I like to use this type of tool which is used to spread icing on cakes and it's just a very thin piece of metal uh, it's very flexible and I like to use that to cut uh, the mouths off of the clay so what you want to do is you want to take something smooth and plastic like uh, something like a VHS or DVD case or something that you don't need anything that is just nice and smooth you don't want to use like wood or cardboard to lay your parts on before you make the mold because the silicone can seep into certain porous materials and stick permanently so something like this cardboard here is or uh, like that is just not a good idea um, so what we've done is we've laid it on here and so what we want to do is we want to build a, uh, a wall around these parts okay so to build a wall around your parts we need three tools we need our exacto knife blade which is very sharp we need foam core which is also called poster board and you can find it in office supply places like office depot office max staples uh, places like that and they sell it in large sheets and it consists of two layers of paper sandwiching a foam interior which is very rigid so we have those and then we also need a straight edge like a t-square and a ruler also will work but a t-square works great because you can you don't have to do as much measuring you can sit it on there and you'll always get a nice straight even line no matter what so uh, those are the three things we need in order to make the wall on our parts okay so with our mouth on our plastic base here all we need to do is we need to measure how high off of that plastic the top of the mouth is and the wall has to be higher than the top so that when we pour the silicone of course it will cover the entire mouth and engulf it instead of you know going maybe halfway up and seeping over the sides of your wall so to do that we can just take any kind of tool and put your finger about where the height of it is and then on our foam core we just transfer that measurement with our thumb about to where it needs to be cut which is let's say right about here okay now the trick to doing this when you're making your foam core wall is to physically get above your part and lay your foam core exactly how it would sit and take a pen and mark looking straight down exactly where the top section would end which would be right about here and make a mark with your pen like this now instead of cutting this piece of foam core all the way through what we're going to do is we're just going to cut about halfway through this with our exacto knife so we'll turn it on its side like this and we'll take our pen we'll just draw a line up where we're going to cut then we'll take our exacto knife and we'll score that but we won't cut all the way through alright so I scored it with the knife as you can see the foam core will hinge just like this and from the inside of the mold you'll see there's nowhere for that silicone to seep out so what we'll do is we'll place our foam core in the same spot like this and we'll make a mark with our pen about here for the side 
and cut it in the exact same way. Okay, so the final box looks just like this. As you can see, if we unfold it, it's just that one strip of uh, foam core, and it has two edges which need to be glued somehow, so that when this is all closed, silicone won't seep out between the cracks. So the trick to that is to simply use a hot glue gun, and of course you can find these in pretty much any hobby shop or craft store. Uh, it just has a little element that heats up, and the stick, which is like a very soft plastic, is pressed through with the trigger, comes out the tip, and you have your hot glue. And it dries extremely fast, and um, that's one of the benefits of using hot glue, is you can make a mold very quickly. Okay, so we need to seal this box. And what we'll do is we'll take some hot glue and squeeze some out along this edge. Oops. We'll just press it together. And we'll let that cool a little bit. Okay, so you want to make sure that once it cools, that the edge has no spaces and that you can't see through. And sometimes what you want to do is just take and seal it up with more hot glue. Because really hot glue is so cheap, it doesn't really matter. You can just glob it on as thick as you want. Okay, so once you've sealed up the side of your mold box, you want to place it over your sculpture. Make sure that it's centered. And you want to take your hot glue gun, and you want to work it all the way around completely, and seal your box right directly to your plastic. After your box is made, you need to use a silicone material, something like this, from Berman Industries. It's a um, BJB TC-5026, and this is the A part, and it comes in two parts, A and B, and you mix it 10% catalyst to 90% of the base, which comes in this large tub, and um, I'm not going to really explain too much about how to do that. Uh, you need to use a scale, something like a a postal scale or a triple beam scale or you can use dental alginate. So once you've mixed up either your dental alginate or silicone you want to pour it into your mold box and you want to make sure it's higher than the part of course so that it completely engulfs it. Wait 24 hours in the case of silicone if that's how long it takes to set up according to the directions or with dental alginate it only takes maybe about 20 minutes then you want to take your box and you want to peel it off and what you'll be left with is something like this as you can see that would have fit inside there with your mouth so the mouth would be inside of this part like this and if you want to save the mouth that you've made the mold of you want to put this in your uh, kitchen freezer and freeze it for about eight hours so that the clay becomes rock hard. Then you pull out the part and when you pull it out you may have to actually cut the mold so that it can pull out. And so you can see here that I've left little cuts so that the parts can easily come out out of the silicone a little bit um, uh, without causing less damage to the clay. So here's a basic mold of Captain Quill of a neutral mouth shape and the only thing worth mentioning really about silicone is when you're working with silicone, if you want to um, make this into what they call a press mold, uh, you can use a firmer shore hardness of silicone. Um, so again, if you find a silicone supplier, you want to talk to them, get to understand what they're selling, and you want to make sure that for the U.S. version of clay, which is clay, uh, clay tune Van Aken brand clay, you want to make sure that the silicone is, uh, you know, any kind of soft silicone. It doesn't have to be hard or anything. But if you're using UK New Plast clay, the silicone has to be more firm, and you want to make sure that there's no thin walls on the outside. You want to make sure that the silicone has some thickness to it, as opposed to making the walls of your mold 
close and in tight to your part. That way when the, the firm silicone has clay pressed into it, then the walls won't come out. But with Van Aken clay tune clay, you don't have to worry too much about that. So here's a basic mold. And what we want to do is we want to take a double boiler and melt some clay and pour it into this mold and make about eight different uh, separate copies of the same mouth. Okay, double boilers consist of two pots, one which fits inside the other like this. The bottom pot has boiling water in it and the top pot has your clay. Now, the clay that we're using is Van Aken, and you really can't do this with New Plast clay. With New Plast clay, you have to heat it up uh, in an oven, usually at the lowest setting, and press the clay, which is already warm, into your mold. So, what we have to do is we have to take this clay, which is melted already, and we have to pour it into our mold for our, uh, our replacement mouth that we created before. So what we're going to do is gonna turn up our flame, take the pot off, and we have to place it on a paper towel to get the water to, uh, to absorb off the bottom. And then we're going to pour it into our mold. Like this. You want to just tap the mold to get any air out. And you want to take your mold and you want to place it in your kitchen freezer for about eight hours. All right. Okay, it's been several hours since I took this um, clay and poured it into our mold and it's been in the freezer and it's really hard and so obviously the benefit to that is uh, when you have soft clay and you don't want it to get destroyed by the mold when you pull it out you freeze it so you'll see here you can see those cuts that I made in the mold uh, help this mount to pop out really easily and there's our very hard and very frozen piece of clay and so the plan with this, uh, you can see here, there's the original mouth, and there's the one we just popped out of the mold, so they're identical. Um, and so what you want to do is you want to make about probably eight or nine of these mouths like this. Um, cast them in your mold, pour your clay in, pop the clay out, and line them all up. So once you have like maybe eight or so mouths, you want to... Uh, they'll all look like this, of course, and you want to reshape each mouth into the position uh, for animation. So these are just the mouth shapes that I used. I have like an M shape, an E shape, an F shape, uh, an, an U shape, um, more of a in a, an R, like an R shape, and an A, ah, and a neutral. Um, so those mouth shapes are about all you really need. Uh, for most lip sync animation. Um, when I remake each mouth, I'm also keeping in mind that the jaw will open. And so, like for this mouth here, what I did is I cut, I took a, uh, a knife and cut straight back, sort of like in this area here, um, and then pulled that jaw opened so that when the character talks, if you look at the neutral shape, and the open shape, the jaw actually moves down like it would if a person's really talking. So keep in mind all of the different muscle features in your mouth if your character is more anatomically correct. Uh, you want to do that and just make sure it looks nice. And you also want to test fit each mouth to the face that you'll be pairing it up with. Um, so I've cast this one in plastic and when you're making these, if you want to cast it in plastic, that's probably the best idea because uh, basically when you're pressing a mouth on to see if it fits properly, if you have a, a hard plastic or plastered head, then you can uh, take your tool 
and really just blend it right into that plastic part or plaster or whatever you want to use and then once you make a mold of each face it'll be a precise fit so you can kind of see the, the trick between uh, you know why we use um, plastic parts to seam up our mouths first before we mold them because it makes each mouth really exact and if this were clay and we were trying to do this every time we try to blend the mouth into the hard head or the soft head I mean if it were clay um, the clay head would distort and so by the time we got to let's say the fifth mouth or the sixth mouth uh, and we're trying to do this to make sure it fits you would have at the end the last mouth would be the most distorted uh, and wouldn't really fit up with your your character's head so in the case of Captain Quill uh, when I animated him you really don't see any sort of seam lines here or anything like that um, and that's part of the process of when you're animating you want to make sure that everything's nice and smooth so the trick isn't actually uh, your trick is not revealed to the, the audience member who's watching the film. I mean, if the, the, the person watching your film is seeing all these lines and stuff, they're going to know the trick, and it distracts from your acting of your character. So always make sure that you uh, your characters are sort of mysterious. You know, Don't give away all your secrets, including revealing them by poor uh, you know, smoothing techniques when you blend your faces together. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pull out the mouth and you can see how it fit together. Okay, so there's the mouth. Now that mouth's been stuck on there for several months so the clay kind of bonded together more than it um, normally would during animation. But I'm going to replace this mouth with a different one. I'm going to use the the M shape, sort of the M. I'm going to pop it on. And I'm just going to kind of use my finger and press it on there. Okay, so we just changed the shape of the mouth, but we didn't have to re-sculpt the entire mouth, and so it saves a lot of time during animation and you can really work more on your character animation than trying to smooth everything out and uh, reshape things and whatnot. So I'll just take my tool and I'll blend this together. And I do have a sort of technique to this. When I blend the two parts together, I'm not always going up starting from the mouth. I kind of do like a zigzag pattern, up and down, up and down, so that um, the clay sort of goes back and forth from between the mouth to the head instead of from just the head to the mouth. And the reason for that is because over time, if you always smooth in a downward motion, the clay from the head would pull onto the mouth, mouthpieces that you um, replaced. And over time, you would just sort of get this depression sort of right in this area of year. So always kind of go up and down if you can. Another great thing is if you're, the angle of your puppet to the camera lens is more like this, there's uh, no reason to smooth that back side of the face what the camera doesn't see. So that kind of gives you an idea of how you would replace the mouth. I'll just do a final smoothing. Take my finger, get in there, get this area. And there you have it. And of course, if you want to get really technical and really precise, you can spend a lot more time than I just did smoothing, but you can see here's unsmoothed and smoothed. So, that actually, I mean, the, the time it took me to do that was maybe, I don't know, two minutes or so to just to smooth, smooth that out. And if, uh, if my camera were far away, like this, you would never even see that. So, 
it's really a very quick technique. The uh, the technique and the look of it is very uh, appealing to the eye. There's no stuck on mouths like a lot of the um, a lot of people. What they do is they take a piece of clay and kind of flatten it out like this, and then they put a little smiley face. You know, like this, and then stick it on their character, and it sticks above the clay like that. And that's like a a very common thing they use, like in celebrity deathmatch on MTV and whatnot. And I mean, sure, it can look kind of neat for a while, but it's not as professional as something that has true dimension and a flexible look like this. So the last thing I did here. Once I made all my replacement mouths is I just took more silicone and made a mold. And it's exactly the same technique I used to make the smaller mold, except that I just laid all the mouths together side by side and uh, built a box around all eight mouths. Then each one, as you can see, it's the mold kind of stuck together, but I did slice the mold so that parts can come out easily, just the same as the small mold. Only I was careful not to um, to cut too deeply because if I cut too deep, then um, it would have made this mold really weak. So the less cuts you do on your mold, the better. But uh, always make sure that you make enough cuts to pull your part out without distorting it. You can use a character that I created for the same film. And his name is uh, Rubel, and he's a Russian character. And I used a similar technique to Captain Quill, except I kind of cheated things a little bit to make it easier. Um, this character has a mustache, and so I made a simple mustache and made a mold, and I cast him in clay, just like I cast that one head. So I just poured the clay in the mold, pulled it out, you know, froze it, cleaned it up. And I made a series of different replacement mouths, like this, here. And the great part about it is when I animate this character, I just stick the mouth on. There's a seam that runs behind that mustache that you'll never see because it's covered up. And so it makes it a lot easier to just stick the mouth on, uh, you know, underneath this mustache and hide it from the camera. So it's also a, a very quick method, and you can get much more exaggeration in mouths this way, and dimension. So, that's just a little trick also if you want to do things faster, is to use characters with mustaches so that you can hide that seam line, and you don't have to worry about spending time smoothing it in, in between your uh, frames of animation. Now I admit that I'm not really much of an expert with uh, Neuplast Clay, but the process when you... Um, try to put clay like this into a mold is a bit different than if you use the US kind of animation clay called Van Aken Clay Tune Clay. Uh, this is the clay that we melted in our dou double boiler. But with Nuplast, what you need to do is you need to take your clay and you have to put it in your oven, uh, particularly like on a cookie sheet or something like that. Uh, or with some aluminum foil and heat it up on the lowest temperature possible until it's nice and soft and then you take bits of it and you put it into your mold so I guess the first piece it had to be kind of flat but you put it in there and you want to press it down really firmly so that the clay will go into those shapes of the mold and then you want to keep adding more pieces, adding more pieces, you know, keep putting it in. And then when you get to the top, you want to just take your thumb and push it down nice and firmly. And then put it in the freezer, just like the other clay, and then pull it out. Uh, that's the only real technique that I know for new plastic when you're trying to do these kinds of things. And it isn't going to be as precise as with Van Aken because you're pouring that in there and it's sort of going into all the details and... Um, it really takes the shape exactly like the mold. So, as I said before, when you buy your silicone mold material, 
use a harder shore hardness so that the, the silicones are more firm and build up the outside edges of your mold a little bit thicker so that when you're pushing downward the middle of the mold won't bulge out like this as you can kind of see it bulges so if it bulges of course that bulge is going to make the inside a little bit larger um, and then it won't really be accurate so heat up your clay push it in there and then I've also seen pictures of people taking a rolling pin and just rolling over the top once it gets to the top so you can do that if you want also um, and it should come out fairly similar to, the, to what we had shown Okay, so that's the basic technique for making replacement mouths. Um, I came up with this technique on my own, but I'm sure other studios have pretty much come up with a similar process. Um, if you have any questions, just send me an email. If you want to know anything extra, or maybe I left something out, or you want to know a certain technique, then uh, just let me know, and um, hopefully your characters will come out the same, and your animation will improve, and um, good luck.